Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be predicting the relative boiling points, the vapor pressure and the solubility in the water uh, between two compounds that are going to be given the structure and there are going to be organic compounds for the most part based on their IMF which means intermolecular forces and uh, the, the three main type of intermolecular forces we really focus on is obviously your dispersion, dipole-dipole and the hydrogen bond. Now keep in mind, dispersion will be present in every single molecule. And we're going to be kind of looking into whether a particular molecule is making dipole-dipole or it's going to be making a hydrogen bond or maybe both. So maybe let's start out with this first one here. So on the first one, I do see there is an a directly attached oxygen and hydrogen. As a result, this will indeed make hydrogen bond. And obviously the carbon oxygen bond right here is going to be polar. So it would be able to make kind of dipole dipole interactions as well. And like I have said, everyone is going to be able to make dispersion forces. So I'm just going to write down dispersion for every single one of them. On the right side, however, I do see an oxygen there and the carbons on the right, so the terminals. Uh, but there is no hydrogen directly connected to the oxygen. So hydrogen bonds are out of question, but this is still polar because, you know, the carbon here and an oxygen here, they're going to have electronegativity differences, and that gives this negative partial negative and these carbons to be partial positive. So that is going to be in a dipole, dipole interactions and still dispersions are going to be there. Um, now, when you're comparing the boiling points, vapor pressure and the solubility in the water, the, as far as the solubility goes in water, you want to make sure your molecule is polar and it does not have a lot of um, hydrophobicity or there is not a, not a lot of nonpolar sites. And even among the polarities, if, if a molecule is making a hydrogen bond, that's even better. So on this first one, we can clearly see that we got a hydrogen bond made on the, on the left one. So this would be more soluble in water okay and uh, since the the size of the molecule is relatively the same um, and since the left one is making the hydrogen bond this would have this would also have high boiling point and uh, whichever actually has a high boiling point they typically have low vapor pressure so that means the one on the second, uh, the second one is going to have low boiling point and it's going to have high vapor pressure. So this one would have low vapor pressure. Remember the vapor pressure and the boiling point, they are inversely related to one another. If something has a high boiling point, it's less likely to vaporize quickly. And if it's, if it's making less vapors on the surface of the liquid, it's going to have less vapor pressure. Okay, let's look at the second one here. Uh, kind of see something similar going on. Got an OH, so that is actually going to be making the same intermolecular forces. I'm just going to copy that down here. And uh, kind of similar on this left one as well. Okay, but now let's look at the solubility. Now, when I'm looking at the solubility, I do see the carbons has been changed on the main chain here i have two carbons but here you have more so more carbons you have or more carbon hydrogens you have more non-polar structure or sides you're going to have so more non-polar sides you have they're not really good for the solubility in the water you want to make sure you are you have less number of uh, non-polar sides you know more polar sides for them to be dissolved in the water so the one on the left side should be actually more soluble in water okay obviously we're only talking about the solubility in water here and then when we're looking at the right side here that is obviously going to be less soluble in water but let's look at the boiling point now they're all making the same type of intermolecular forces but since on the right side or the molecule that's on the right side is actually have a bigger chain so they gonna have relatively more dispersion forces 
than what you have on the left side. So that makes this having a higher boiling point. So another way of saying, whenever you're making the same type of intermolecular forces, you want to look at the surface area of the molecule. A bigger molecule will boil at a higher temperature. So this would have higher boiling point. That means this is going to have low vapor pressure. Okay, so the one on the left side should have low boiling point, and that would have high vapor pressure. So that's how you want to look at it. Let's look at this next one here. Um, all I really got here is the carbon hydrogens and carbon carbon bonds on this next one. And remember, the carbon hydrogen bonds are nonpolar, and so are your carbon carbon bonds. So both of those would be only making dispersion forces. So since the molecule on the right side is actually bigger in size, it's going to have a higher boiling point. So if this has high boiling point, that means it's going to have low vapor pressure. And the one on the left side is going to have low boiling point. And if this has low boiling point, it's going to have high vapor pressure because it's going to boil quickly. So it's going to be exerting more pressure on the surface of the liquid. As far as their solubility goes, both of those only making dispersion forces. None of those are really polar at all. So they're both actually going to be insoluble in water. Like if someone really asks you to kind of pick one out of those two, uh, it's, I mean, that's not really like a really good question, but if does someone ask you, then you want to pick a smaller one because it has less dispersion forces relatively to the one on the, on the right side. But both of those would be insoluble in water because they're not really polar in there. Okay, let's look at this next one here. Maybe it's the time you guys do it and then check your answer with mine here. What I really have on the first one, I do see that I got a hydrogen nitrogen connected, so that's in the recipe for a hydrogen bond. We do see in a carbon nitrogen bond that's going to be polar, and obviously we know the dispersions are always going to be there. So that leaves you with all three types of intermolecular forces here. Okay, but on the right side, we don't have a nitrogen hydrogen directly connected, but rather that's in a CH3 group on the right side here. That's not really shown. Don't take that as a hydrogen, that's in a methyl group there. So, since you don't have any hydrogen bond, that leaves you with the dipole dipole and the dispersions only. So, I'm just going to go ahead and copy that down here. So, makes the life a little bit easier. Hydrogen bonds presence, it's going to be means it's more soluble in water. Okay, on the top of that, the relative size of the molecule is about the same, uh, even though one of them is six membered and the other one is five membered, but the number of carbons are actually the same. Uh, since you're making more or stronger intermolecular forces on the left side, this would have high boiling point and that will reflect having low vapor pressure so that means the one on the right side should have a relatively low boiling point and that would leave you with high vapor pressure on this one maybe let's do this next one here so this next one is kind of similar to the one that we have done on the top we got an oh directly connected and uh, we're going to have a polar side, non-polar side. So we will have these all three different types of intermolecular forces made here. But on the right side here, this actually an ion. It's an salt. So you got a sodium salt. And uh, as soon as you put it in the water, it's going to dissolve. So it's going to be making an ion dipole interactions as well, um, along with dipole dipole. So I'm just going to go ahead and say that's actually going to be an ionic compound and makes ions in water. So as soon as, as soon as you see in a positive and negative charge in the molecule, that's gonna be very soluble in water. So this is actually gonna be more soluble in water than one on the left. You can go up to like 20, 25 carbons 
and uh, in the chain and having maybe in a negative charge on one on the one end of the chain and it would still dissolve in water that's the power of having in a negative or positive charge on the molecule that it increases the solubility dramatically in the molecule that's how the soap really work in in the water and uh, since it's an ionic salt it's actually going to be having in a higher uh, boiling point Okay, so that leaves you with low vapor pressure. So that means the one on the left side should have high vapor pressure because it's going to have low boiling points. Uh, ionic, ionic compounds typically have more uh, or higher boiling points. So that's exactly what's really happening here. Let's look at this next one here. When I'm looking at this next one, there's really not any differences other than the size of the ring. One of them is a six-membered ring. And the other one is a five-membered ring. Both has oxygen in there. So they're both actually going to be doing dipole-dipoles and the dispersion forces. No hydrogen bonds made on any one of those. Well, since you have a bigger chain on the left side, it's actually going to be um, better in terms of uh, making a greater number of dispersion forces. So this is going to be having high boiling point that leaves you with low vapor pressure but since you have higher dispersion forces on the left one it's not going to be as soluble in water as the one on the right side because it has a smaller dispersion forces uh, so that makes this as more soluble in water and it's going to have low boiling point and if this have low boiling point it's actually going to be having high vapor pressure another one here it's kind of similar story we have carbonyls well in one case we have only two three carbons total in the other case we have six actually we are running into a very similar scenario we're going to have dipole dipole interactions and the dispersion forces only the one with the ring is going to be making more dispersion forces so i'm going to say that the one on the left side would be more soluble in water because it's got the less nonpolar side and the one on the right side since this has a bigger ring it's more hydrophobic it's going to be less soluble in water but since it's bigger it's going to have a higher boiling point and the one on the right side would have low boiling point so whichever has high boiling point would have low vapor pressure and vice versa.